was yesterday, my first love, the way she would come back after she would let go of my hand, my first love, the way she caressed my hand as I dance, my first love, even on my worst days, she put a smile on my face, my first love, the way she made me work hard to get her, but I knew she always wanted me, my first love. It would break my heart when she left me. My first love. I remember the first night I slept with her and how she smelled so amazing. My first love. I would get jealous when I see her in another man's hand. My first love. Though we haven't seen each other in years, she will always be my first love. Love can leave a memory Nobody can steal, but it can also leave pain nobody can heal. My first love. Damn, brother. That was profound as hell. So, the folks want to know, who is the Nomad's first love? Well, to be honest, I'm going to have to tell you guys, my first love was orange, round and profile a basketball like a lot of young boys they fall in love with different types of sports i remember basketball was my safe haven in my life what about you when you said round and orange i thought you was talking about an oompa loompa <laughs> <laughs> i thought you was about to say your first love was an oompa loompa i was about to say this boy different <laughs> <laughs> that would have been crazy that would have been crazy too Damn, that 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 orange basketball that was that was your first love. Yeah, you know, like uh, growing up, sports was uh, something that I fell in love with because it allowed me to let go of this world and just just enjoy it. Um, and like, I don't know about for you, but. I just really loved basketball growing up, you know, and all types of sports, baseball, football, sports was fun. It was, uh, it was, it was special to me. What about you? Mm -hmm. Well, me, I can't say my first love was basketball, Mm -hmm. but my first love was sports. See, I grew up in Europe when I was little, so I was more of the soccer type. But when I came here to Canada, everybody was playing with this orange ball and throwing it into a hoop. And I'm like, damn, you don't use your legs? (laughs) What type of game is this? It threw you off, right? It threw me off, but I was like, I think I I I could do it. Yeah. I, I think I could be good at it. You know, that insane confidence that Somalis have comes in handy when you play in different types of sports. Oh, man. You need it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that. Then that orange basketball became, it became a love. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't the first love, but it stole my heart. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. hmm You know? So, when it comes to uh, basketball, like, I'm going to tell you a little bit about... Uh, my favorite player growing up. Um, I grew up a little, uh, I grew up in the early 2000s. So before we get into that, yeah, let's just let the people know though. Mm. Today, we flying with a duo. Oh yeah, it was a bit quiet today. Don't you? Yeah, that, I, th- I, th- I think we're missing a lot of energy right now. Really? Yeah, yeah I, th- I think we're missing... Bellow with two L's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I wouldn't tell her this face-to-face, but I admire her as a, as a person. But, she, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 don't, he, don't, he don't like being, getting emotional and all of that. But just know Bellow with two L's. This episode, you are missed. You know what I mean? We're a trio. I can't say that, but... Yeah. Yeah, I can smooth, yes, yeah, smooth with two O's. Bella with two L's, I support you. <laughs> come back home, honey. Come back home. We miss you. Yeah. But you know, our partner's out, you know what I mean, doing personal business. Yeah. 
And, you know, sometimes, you know, the show must go on. But at the end of the day, the show's about us. We have her blessing. Yeah. We are good. Today's episode, you're checking in with the boy Smooth. And the boy Nomad. And uh, Bella with two L's, uh, I hope you come back home safe. And can't wait to do the next episode with you. That's the most you get it from me. Okay, that's the most you're getting from him. And, you know, this is the episode where we got just the two homies. Mm -hmm. So, of course, today we chose to speak about my first love, sports. Sports. Sports, ladies. For those of you tuning in, tune in. Listen carefully. Maybe you guys can get a better understanding of why guys are so obsessed with sports huh? we got some gems for you yeah. we got some new information just stay tuned ladies we gonna make it lady friendly too but mm. guess what though sometimes you gotta do it for the bro shout out to the homies uh, you already know so let's get let me get back into uh my first love basketball and my favorite player growing up Allen Iverson. Ooh, with the brave? Ooh, that boy could dance. <laughs> you got heart. You mm. got heart. And what I loved about his game was he made it look so easy, but at the same time, he was fierce. He was fierce. And uh, I remember when I was, uh, I think it was 15, 15 years old, it was his MVP year. You remember he had the those uh, the answer fours Ooh. came out, the one with the zipper. Ooh, don't tell them about that. Yeah. Don't, they, they don't know about that. The, I don't know if they know about that. I don't like, think they know about that. So I remember when those shoes dropped, and uh, I was playing in a basketball league here in Toronto called uh, York Youth League. Shout out to York Youth League. Shout out to, to all the boys out in, uh, out in uh, York. North York, and uh, I remember that we had a basketball tournament for the championship that year, and uh, my mom ended up buying me the answer fours, and I was uh, very, very excited to play in them, and it was my first and only time my mom came to watch me play basketball. Ooh, shout out to mom, shout out to mom. So, you know, I've had to put on a show. Oh, right? come on. Yeah, so... <laughs> In the tournament, I did my thing. Ended up uh, winning the championship. I got MVP for that uh, for that for that tournament. Don't play with that boy. <laughs> so after the game, you know, I came to my mom and said, "Oh, yeah, look, check this out. I won." Da da da. You know what she said to me? <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us. I know the people want to know. She was like, "You need to pass the ball." <laughs> <laughs> She didn't even give me no congratulations, nothing. She told me, you need to pass the ball. And I was like, you didn't just see what I did over there. <laughs> but that's the beauty of, of a Somali mom. You know, like they're always going to remind you of, you got to do more. Work, like today don't mean nothing. Like there's a saying by uh, Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather. He said, um, the more you win, the more you should work harder. You should only think about winning. As soon as you think about losing, you're going to lose. And that's a man who's never lost. So I'm taking his word. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Well, so why don't you tell me about an experience with basketball or uh, maybe even uh, the football, a.k.a. soccer, back in uh, Europe? Well, you know, I picked up basketball not late. Per se, because like came here at the age of five, so five is not late. Nah. But when I saw everybody playing it, you know, I got into it. But you know, this part like nobody really knows. But my inspiration mm -hmm. to play the game was my aunt. Really? Yeah. How did that so, come about? So my aunt. She passed away. Allah Yeah, so she was on the Somali Women Nationals basketball team. Whoa. Whoa, that's big. So she didn't waste any chance to tell me. 
That she hoops for real. That's so hard. That's so hard. So one of my earliest and fondest memories was yeah. we were in the neighborhood, you know, young boys. We have a tall net in my neighborhood. It's like 13 feet. What? Yeah, yeah. So the jump shot has a lot of arc on it. Whoa. You know what I mean? The homies know the floater game is deep. <laughs> they know it goes up and must come down. <laughs> they know how that goes. So, it's me and a couple of the homies were playing three-point shootout. You know, my aunt was at the My aunt just came from grocery shopping. Yeah. She called my phone a couple of times. I didn't pick up, obviously. I was playing basketball. Yeah. She came and said, you want to play basketball and not pick up my calls and not do the groceries? <laughs> obviously, you know how moms do. Definitely. And I was like, I was hoping. I was playing three-point shootout. She said, you can't even shoot. No. She called you out like that? She called me out like that. Okay, so what'd you do? I said, obviously, like, I'm a great shooter. Did you challenge her? <laughs> Did I part? challenge her? She challenged me, brother. <laughs> she challenged me. No. She went in the house. Okay. Grabbed my ball shorts. Okay. Grabbed the hoodie. <laughs> came to that ball court. Said, I got next. Smile so woman, special. I'm telling you. I said, Go, go inside the house. <laughs> what are you doing? You are embarrassing me. Are you kidding me? Stop it. <laughs> she said, Nana, we're doing this. All right. And she said, and I'm not on your team. I want someone else's team. I said, obviously, you're not on my team. Wow. You think I want you? So she picked up one of the homies. One of the homies said, I'll play with her. All right. So we played. Three-point shootout. For those of you that don't know, five shots around, around the arc. Yeah. Make a shot from every side. Get your teammate. They make another five shots. You know what I mean? Last person, first person to make all 10 shots wins. That's Simple game. Yeah. So we played the game. First people go. I made sure I made sure I went second. Mm -hmm. You know what she did? She made sure she went second. Okay. I said, okay, now she now now she's playing too much. <laughs> she's doing way. Too much. Please tell me she was talking trash. Oh my god, brother! <laughs> like, I'm. I saw another side of her. <laughs> I didn't know this existed. Okay. Um, like she used to tell me stories. Everybody tells stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you know, talk is cheap. Yeah, talk is cheap. Yeah. Show me what you do. Yeah. So this is the first time I got to see her action. All right. So we're playing. You know me. I think I'm nice playing around. Taking shots, you know, playing around, shooting like one hand, trying to play, you know, disrespect her a little. Yeah. She nice. hits three in a row. Okay. Did she she hits three in a row. She looking at me saying, yeah, boy, pick your socks up. Ooh. <laughs> I wish I'd see that. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I started making my shots. It came down to the last shot. Me and her were last shot. Okay. She shot it. I threw the ball just to bump her ball in the air. Hit it, okay. got the ball back, shot it, got it in. She said, you cheat. By any means. I said, listen. Get the W. Listen, don't think you nice. <laughs> this is the streets. <laughs> we play by different rules. <laughs> <laughs> After that, the homie looked at me and said, yeah, she can shoot. Yeah. I said, nah, she's still lost though. <laughs> he said, you beat her by one shot. Yeah. I said it's not about that. You looked at she different. lost. You looked at her different. And you know what she said? So I'm a grown ass woman. Mm. You happy you beat me like this? Oh. Imagine me in my prime. I would have whipped your booty. Mm. I said, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> she, she and then I knew it was in the family. So it was a family sport. Yeah. So that was something that brought us together. We used to watch basketball games and things like that of that nature together. Yeah. You guys bonded on that. Who knew? Yeah. That's that that it would be that. You never the thing is like uh you never know what you're gonna connect with a person unless you actually talk to them and see who they really are. And the beauty about life is everybody has been young before, but not everyone has been old. So when we see people that are older than us and they're acting a certain way, we think that's who they were their whole life, not realizing that they used to be young too. They used to, they used to enjoy themselves too. They used to have hobbies. They used to live life. And we 
don't realize that their experience and their lives made them who they are. And that's pretty interesting. And I wanted to ask you about, um, did you ever wonder why guys are in love with sports? Because you see a lot of guys, 50, 60, 70 years old, they still got a love for the game, whatever game it is. Is it because the competitiveness or maybe because they love seeing greatness in the making? Me personally, I love to see greatness and I love to see it in different forms, not only in sports, business, um, also like uh, professionalism. There's a saying by Martin Luther King, if I can't do great things, I can do small things in a great way. And that's a beautiful saying. So why do you think guys love sports? Well, for me, I feel like it's the it's the team aspect of it. So we always want to feel like we're involved and included in something. Something bigger than us. Something bigger than us. So that the team and the sports, it brings a camaraderie yeah. that you can't find anywhere else. It's electric energy that you get. You know what I mean? And then when we watch the sports, we think of ourselves as that player, as that person, and what we would do in those situations. Yeah. So I feel like we fall in love with all of it. The moment, the five, four, three, two, one, game winner. If you tell me there's a little boy or even a little girl out there yeah. that hasn't done the five, four, three, two, one, what a with a piece of paper, a little ball, into throwing out garbage. Like, anyway. if you haven't done that and had that moment when, ah, yeah. and the crowd goes crazy, yeah. you know what I mean? If you haven't done that, then, like, I, I don't know what to tell you. You ain't having fun. You ain't, you ain't living life. You ain't living life. You don't like sports. If you never had that moment, guess what? Sports, I don't think it's for you. It's not, you're not a real fan. You're not, you're not, you're not, it's not for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like them casual fans that pop up. During the playoffs, yeah. you know what I mean? People are like, oh my God, that's my team. I've been cheering them forever. Like, you haven't. Stop the cap. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. So like, we, you, like, um, I wanted to ask you also, like, um, being competitive is, um, is something that um, most people experience when they're, um, competing for any type of uh, thing in this world. And uh, do you feel like it's important to be competitive in all aspects of your life? Or is it just meant to be left on the sports court? Well, competitiveness, it could have negative effects Definitely. and it could have positive effects, right? Yeah. So... If you're if you're doing it with the right intentions, yeah. then I think competitiveness is needed in life. But don't ever don't ever get lost in it. That's that's the thing I think people like get most messed up with in the competitiveness. So like in the moment, you come yeah. In that moment. If you get if you get too competitive, the game loses its fun because yeah. this game and sports is meant to be fun. I play sports to have fun. Yeah. If I go link up with my homies and we play a sport and I don't have fun, mm -hmm. I'll stop playing that sport yeah. because what do I gain from it? Mm -hmm. Like right now, I'm not as good as I used to be in basketball. Yeah. But if the homies say, let's link up and play basketball, you for sure know I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm never going to lose with age or not is the ability to talk shit. And be competitive. So I will come on that court and talk like I could still do what I used to do. Even though and let you know that I'm that guy and I'm that dude. But my body might not let me do it. But my mouth and my mind, it'll it'll get me far in the game. <laughs> I will get in somebody's head. I will tell you what you are not and try to get that competitive edge mentally. Yeah. Because sports is mental and physical. Yeah. You can be... You can be bigger than me all day. Yeah. But if I get that edge on you, that mental edge, and I find something that 
irks you, yeah. I'll use it against you. I'm that guy. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I remember listening to Mike Tyson talk about in uh, boxing. So in boxing, before a fight, they're standing in the middle of the ring, standing in front of each other, and the referee is uh, explaining the rules of the fight, right? So Mike Tyson was talking about how during that moment, he would stare dead into his opponent's eyes. And he would wait until his opponent looked away. And it was at that moment he knew he beat them. That's the psychological games that sports brings and that competitiveness and that challenge. It's, it's, um, it's, it's thrilling to watch, right? And um, growing up, I used to prefer watching sports than uh, doing um, my schoolwork. Like most, you know, I'll be honest, man. And uh, Hoya, if you're listening to this, close your ears. I don't want you to hear this. <laughs> but I, uh, I love, I love the game, and uh, it just, and. and because of that love that I had for the game, it distracted me from other aspects of my life and my personal development. And uh, I noticed that a lot of young black kids, not only Somalis, have gone through that where they believe at a young age that they're going to make it to the NBA or they're going to make it to the EPL or the Spanish League or whatever sport that you're into. And uh, when they get to an age where they realize that's not it for them, they tend to um, derail onto the street life because the street life has that camaraderie that sports also has, that brotherly love where your boys are, um, they're everything for you, you know, like. And they're basically a team. They're your team. And. And I think that comes down to the lack of father figures that we all have experienced because it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. And um, I personally had experienced that myself. Um, do you think that uh, sports is good for kids or uh, it could blind them in the long run? That's a good question, right? Well, I think... Like, I'm a big advocate of sports because yeah. I coached a lot of kids. I played sports. After I played sports, I decided to coach kids and pass on my experience, even though I don't have a lot. <laughs> but guess what? I'm good at talking. I'm good at motivating. Yeah. So that coaching stuff, it works for me. Those you know? do teach. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I still had a wicked jump shot. Don't get it twisted. Come yeah. on now. Everybody knows me. Check out. Check, check the stats. Everybody knows I'm a shooter. Check Come, the on. Game tape. Come on. Come on. The game tape is, is it's not that extensive. <laughs> but uh the streets will let you know. <laughs> but um sports, I feel like they're good for kids with balance. To so if you help them understand that sports can open doors and give them opportunities yeah. that they didn't know about, then yes, because Sports is not always about getting to the mountaintop, the pinnacle, which is NBA, NFL, EPL, uh, the FIFA World Cup, getting onto the huge stage. Because let's be honest, only only sixty players get drafted to the NBA. Yeah, you know, a year. Yeah. And so for you to make the NBA, it's going to be difficult. No one said you can't do it if you want it, and that's your dream. I want everybody to pursue every dream you ever want to pursue. But at the same time, I want you to understand that if you don't make the NBA, there are other leagues. There are other ways to make revenue from it. Let's say you played basketball your whole life. You can get into coaching. You can do things outside of basketball and still stay connected and stay connected to the game and do something. And then at the same time, this will get you scholarships. Like you can get a massive education for free yeah. because of your athletic and physical ability. Your hard work will pay off. You just got to pick which avenue. And if you have the right people behind you and the right people telling you about things, then I believe sports will always be good. Definitely. Definitely. 
I, I definitely agree with I definitely agree with you, even though my experience led me down a different path. I definitely recommend every young child, female and male to play sports because the life lessons that you learn from the games that you play, they translate into real life. Hard work is very, very important. And I feel like I didn't understand how important hard work was until later on in my life when I look back and I see the improvement that I get that I gained from sports and the the life lessons that I learned from way back. You see, and what you said right now has led, would you segue perfectly into my question? Because okay. the question I was going to ask you is what, what like lessons have you learned from sports? Which life lessons? Because there are lessons within the sports. People don't understand that. People think we just play sports because we're boys and we want to be active. There are lessons in these sports. So I wanted to ask you, just tell me some examples or a moment where you learned a lesson that translated into your life yeah. from the sports. Well, I have to go back to when I used to play high school basketball. And uh, when I was younger, I used to have a, I used to have a big, big temper. And uh, I used to fight with my coach all the time. I thought I was the greatest thing in this world. And uh, I thought I was the best te- best player in the game. And every time I'm taking the most craziest shots, I'm not passing the rod. Practice? We talking about practice? Yeah. This is why Al Armstrong was your favorite yeah, player. That's why. He's, my, he's, he's, he's special. Like, the way, the way he played, I try to play like him. I used to love the dance. Like, I used to love to do the crossover. Where I used to love to do the step back. I used to talk a lot, a lot of trash. <laughs> I, I even remember one time I talked so much trash in a tournament at uh, Martin Grove Collegiate on Eggleton and Martin Grove. Yeah. So those people that, that live in Toronto, they'll know that school. And I was talking so much trash to the player. I'm thinking, this is just the game. I'm talking trash. After the game, I walked to the bus stop him and his boys ended up rushing me. <laughs> That's a life lesson. Don't talk too much trash or you might get it back <laughs> physically. So I'd say that's one of the life lessons. To don't always talk. Let your actions speak, right? So it humbled you. It humbled me. That, that moment really did humble me. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you, I, I, I was pretty, uh, I didn't talk as much trash after that. <laughs> makes sense. That that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess a lesson I learned from sports yeah. was that sports is for everybody. Yeah. So it introduced me to people that I did not think played sports, right? Because when you watch basketball, basketball is a predominantly black sport. Mm -hmm. There's the one to occasional white guy that's very good at shooting. And, but mostly it's predominantly a black sport. So us growing up in Toronto, when we play basketball, you go see every color. White, black, brown, every shade and color in the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, shocked me. (laughs) Because I'm seeing a little Filipino Filipino boy playing with a group of uh, Africans, playing with a group of... Indians yeah. and we're on the same team and we have the same goals and we're trying to win a game and I'm looking and saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. They removed all everybody, what, what, everybody plays this game? Yeah. So I got a different aspect in life. It introduced me to diversity. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, I didn't know everybody played this sport. Yeah. 
right? Mm-hmm. I thought the sport was like something we did. Like when I say we, I mean like us as blacks, we played it. Mm-hmm. But when I look around, it was everybody played it. Mm-hmm. This game was so worldwide that I did not know that. So it bought diversity and taught me that don't ever judge a book by its cover ever because you know that there was some boys that walked onto that court that you looked at and said that boy don't know how to hoop yeah and he whooped your ass that's true that's very very true and he was wearing a backpack and he had on suspenders and he had on some glasses and he was an indian boy and he put Buckets on you. Yeah. He put some AI crossovers on you and you left that court saying confused. What just <laughs> happened? <laughs> it woke you up. You know what I mean? So that the main lesson it taught me was don't ever judge a book by itself. Ever, ever. You never know what you're gonna get. That's the beauty of life, right? Yeah. And I remember I remember uh one of my coaches when I was, when I first moved to Toronto, because I grew up in Ottawa, which is the capital city of Canada. And um, I went to a predominantly um, Caucasian school and I thought I was the best basketball player. I moved to Toronto and I went to an all black school where when I came into grade nine, almost everybody at the tryout was able to dunk. And I'm a skinny, little Somali guy and I didn't make the team and that was the first time my first love broke my heart but you know what got me to bounce back after that I remember reading the story about Michael Jordan not making his grade 19 that woke me up and that next year I ended up working on my game for six to eight hours every day outside and when I came back in grade 10, I was able to compete with guys that were dunking. And I still couldn't dunk or anything like that. I'm a small guy, but I, I put on muscle mass. I started working out because my coach at the time was, was telling me, yeah, you can shoot a little bit, but you ain't shit. You got to put the work in. And he... He busted my ass every single day, rode me, talked a whole lot of trash to me every day, reminded me that I'm nobody. And that drove me to get better and better. So by the time I came back onto the court for school, I was ready to actually compete in Toronto. And that gave me a confidence that I will never, ever forget that the important life lesson is that cowards never start the weak never finish and winners never quit you guys hear that you hear that it's the man with the coats it's the man with the most coats they call them the nomads (laughs) don't play with that boy yeah hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard just you always remember in life, I feel like you got to remember that you could be good at anything in this world, but there's somebody out there. You got to tell you, you got to remind yourself, there's somebody out there that's working harder than you, that wants it more than you. So you got to remember those nights that you want to take a break. There's somebody out there who's working. You got to put the work in. And I fell in love with work ethic as I got older when I realized how how much accomplishments you get from working hard. I can respect that. I can respect that. So let's discuss. You said Al Iverson was your favorite player. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So do you have a favorite team? And I know Al Iverson was your favorite player, so maybe the Philadelphia 76ers. But why did you what's the why behind why did you follow that team and why did you like them um i'd say my favorite team is the chicago bulls if any any of you know me uh my other favorite player is Derek rose i used to 
I used to love Derrick Rose. Like, he was actually my best friend. I used to talk about Derrick Rose like me and him were best friends. Like, anytime I talk to my friends, I'm telling them about Derrick Rose facts because I love the way they're two different styles of players, but I like the way Derrick Rose carried himself because he carried himself where he never talked. He let his game do the talking, and that boy was crazy on the court. And I remember the year that he won a championship. Uh, my bad. I remember the year that he won an MVP. Yeah. And that beginning of that season in the press conference, he said, why not me? Why can't I win an MVP? And when I heard that, I said, this guy's going to win MVP. And I told all my friends, and they're like, you're crazy. There's no way he's going to win MVP. And what did he do? Youngest MVP in history. And that made me fall in love with his game and who he is as a person. Even though I never met the, never met him. But Chicago Bulls was always my favorite team because just like Allen Iverson, I wanted to be like Mike. You know? There's a, there, there's a saying uh, by Allen Iverson. He did in his, um, what's that thing called? His Hall of Fame speech. He said, he gave me the vision. You want to be fast like Isaiah shoot like Bird, rebound like Barkley, Barkley, rebound like Barkley, pass like Magic, be dominant like Shaq, but man, I wanted to be like Mike. So, what about you? What's your favorite player? Me, anybody that knows me, anybody that knows Smooth, knows me through and through. I'm a Kobe fan. The Mamba. That boy. Woo! I remember Kobe Bryant. Just the world was against him. Yep. You know what I mean? Shaq left him. 06, 07. He was, he was threatening to leave to go to Chicago. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's my homie. I know what he was doing. He was playing with y'all. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was playing with y'all. But... The thing with Kobe was that this man was so determined to be great that he didn't let anything stand in his way. And the thing with him was everybody was trying to surpass Mike. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to actually be like Mike. He was, he was so secure in himself that he could talk to and learn from his predecessors. Like people now, even in life, like people don't like to ask people things. People don't like to communicate with others. People don't like to give game. And people don't like to receive game. Right. Mm -hmm. So one lesson I always took from Kobe in life was you can always learn from others. You know what I mean? Don't ever think you know everything. There's always something to learn. And Kobe was always a student. No matter how good he was, he always stayed a student of the game. So That lesson for me was, doesn't matter what I do in life, there's always something I don't know and I'm willing to learn. So I'm the type of person, if I don't know something, I will ask questions. I will always ask questions and I'll always want to learn about everything because there's someone out there that knows something more than me. It doesn't matter if I have 20 degrees, 20 masters, and I think I know everything. You don't know everything. You'll never know everything. You'll never know anything. You can always learn something. Yeah. So me, that's why I feel like I'm a great listener. Mm-hmm. I learned from him that at an early age that there's always something you can do to improve. Yep. And there's someone out there that knows it. And you got to be humble enough to understand and put yourself in a position to say, hey, I need some help. I don't understand this. I see that you're good at this. Can you help me with this? Mm-hmm. Like, don't be shy. Don't be shy in life. Like, um, there's a there's a hadith by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
and he he says that uh, when a person seeks the path of knowledge, the door the doors of Jannah are open. So this is the beauty of Islam and the beauty of life. You need to be a student of life. And you, if any of you guys listen to um, athletes, if you listen to um, musicians, if you listen to anybody who's successful, they will all talk about how they are a student and they are focused on learning because like they always say, knowledge is power. But the person that continuously seeks knowledge, continuously tries to upgrade their their um, themselves, will attain success. Because let's be real: in life, there's no being stagnant. Either you're moving forward or you're moving backwards. So this is something I recently learned when I started. Um, researching greatness because i've always felt like i wanted to be great and i know you felt like you wanted to be great in life right always always and when i was watching sports when i was younger that's what i was very much um addicted to seeing greatness in the making and inshallah get we will both get that opportunity to be great in life but if we want to be great we got to find somebody who's did it before and ask them how to do it. Yeah, facts, 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 facts. So, now, it may seem like this is just like a section for the men, but you know, women, we got to keep you intrigued. We got to keep you inside. So, I'm going to take a little subtle shot at you guys before I uplift you guys. Because, you know, we still got to remain humble out here. Yeah. So, you guys always say, oh my God, why do you like sports? Oh my God, why do you follow this person? The same reason you guys follow fictional characters in TV shows. You guys have favorite characters, Mm -hmm. and that is people playing roles. We like people that play sports. They're humans like us, and we like them. We like greatness. So, just like you like your TV character shows and we let you do that, let us like our teams. And now, on another note, now, don't get it twisted. Now, there are women that play sports at a high level and there's women that are nice. That are yeah, nicer than guys too, yeah. Trust me, and yeah. guess what? Mm. One woman that played ball and, you know, had a little little, little buzz and was doing her thing a little. Sure, a no, 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 no. We talk. We talking about regular people. We talking about regular folks. Okay. We talking about. We talking about hood legends. You know what I mean? Okay. One of them. You know who it is? Who? Our own co-host, Bella, with two L's. Get out of here. She ain't taking no L's on the court. I don't believe that. Oh my! She was nice. How long ago was this? This was. Uh, you know, we don't speak on age. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Bella was nice with it. She got to let herself a little jump shot. Yeah. She can dribble the block. Yeah. Don't play with her. She's not here right now. Yeah. But guess what? But I'm here for you. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to let these people know that you was nice. Okay. She used to, she, she used to play ball in the summertime. She yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. For, for fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. She plays ball in her neighborhood. Yeah. She played with the youngins. Mm. She, I'm pretty sure she was on her high school team. She plays some hoop. You know, that's why I admire her. She gives back to the youth. Like, yeah. She always... Like, she was always looking out for people that are younger than her and always trying to advise them to what is right. And uh, that's something that's special Mm because a lot lot of people get caught up in their own lives and their own Mm -hmm. drama, Mm -hmm. which even her, she's been through a lot of hardship and she still remembers to give back to to younger kids. That's uh, that's special. Yeah. And, and, you know, next episode, you know, when you come back, you know, you can let, you can, you can let no man know that. But there's some, there's some tapes out there. There's some, there's some people willing to speak on how nice you are. I'm not trying to hear that. Uh, listen, Bella, with two L's, let him know when you get back that you used to do this ball stuff for real. She was a hooper, as we say. You know what I mean? And like, you know, while we have this chance, you know what I mean? Me, I knew some girls that were nice. Yeah. 
They were hoopers. Mm -hmm. I'm talking Somali women. Yeah. That were nice with it. Yeah. With a wicked jump shot, with a crossover. Yeah. You know what I mean? They may not want to be mentioned now because, you know, that was back in the day. Yeah. But people know you. You were her legend. Her legend. You do your thing. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. There's a couple of girls that um, I would see on the court and I get a little nervous if I had to switch up on her. Just in case she tried to give me a, like a nice move. So I used to always have to hand check them. <laughs> <laughs> let them know. Let them know. Hey, 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 hey. Don't try that move. Don't do it. I know you got. Don't try it with me. Don't do it. Do it to someone else. Yeah. You know? So for everybody listening, females, males, you know what I mean? Just look at you. Do you know that girl? Have you ever seen that video of that Somali young girl in Boston? The balls? Ooh, she got gay, man. Jamad. Woo! Don't play with that girl. Oh man, she got confidence. Oh, 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 oh! I see her with yeah, the crossovers. Mom. You know what I mean? Doing this. She had herself a little clinic. I think it was last year. She had a clinic yeah. here in Toronto. Really? Yeah, she had a clinic here in Toronto, and she did it for the little girls that you know mm. wanted to play the sport. And she's doing big things. Yo, may Allah guide her and give her. Uh, the success in this world and the next. She's special. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, keep doing your thing. You know, we're supporting you. Definitely. You know, young sister doing your thing. All you sisters doing your thing. If you like the sport, keep playing it. Yeah, I see Don't a lot think... more girls do. I see a lot more girls, uh, young Muslim girls wearing hijabs that are uh, playing sports. And that, that makes me very, very proud. They're breaking a lot of barriers. You guys, uh, you guys are showing the world you know, the positive side of Islam. Yeah. And don't let nobody take that from you. You could do it too. You know, you can be nice. You can be great at everything you do. This is for men and women. Big facts. You know what I mean? This sports thing, it's 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 worldly. Yeah. It's for it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody tell you can't play a sport. Because everybody wasn't always good. You know, like, I, I what I realized as I got older that uh, in life, a human being can do anything they want but the problem is you only have a finite time you have a small amount of time this, this world is but a day so like you can use your utilize your time to accomplish a lot of stuff but death is coming you know and uh we get caught up in our day-to-day -day that we don't forget that uh, we do forget that there's uh there's a test waiting for us at the end of the day you can enjoy your life. You can do all of that, but always remember that um, our purpose in this world is to worship our Lord. And you working hard is part of that worship. You accomplishing things is part of that worship. So focus on finding a purpose because without a purpose, you're lost in this world. You know, Nomad, always spitting facts, always doesn't miss a chance to spit them facts. And you know us, we appreciate it. You know what I mean? I always tell you guys, me, I'm always learning. You know what I mean? Even from my co-hosts, you know what I mean? Always. So it's always love on this side. Yeah, me, me too. Like even like uh, you said it last week that uh, when, when we say something, it's a, it's a reminder to ourselves and every single person should be thinking in that sense because the words that do come out of your mouth affect you more than it does other people. And uh, with that said, I was thinking, let's move on to the Somali spotlight. What about you? What do you think? Yeah, we should definitely do that. And now we are moving into the Somali spotlight. I wanted to introduce you guys to our spotlight of the day, Mukhtar Ali who is a soccer player, a.k.a. football player, from across the pond. He was born in Saudi, came to the UK at the age of four or five, and he's the second eldest of five children. And what's really special about him, he comes from a lineage of greatness. His grandfather, who he was named after, is Sheikh Mukhtar Mohammed. Hussein. And for those who don't know who that is, he was the Speaker of the Somali Parliament and briefly an interim president of Somalia after the assassination of Abdurashid Ali Shamarki. 
and he was actually succeeded by the uh, Muhammad Siad Bade. So his grandfather ended up dying at the age of 100 in Nairobi, Kenya. And I'd say it's a safe bet that his grandfather's legacy had an impact on him. They do say success is contagious. That's facts. Thank you for the introduction on our boy Mukhtar. So Mukhtar Ali, he is a special young man. He plays for the national Saudi Arabian uh, soccer team. So he's made that team. And he started off playing soccer in the United Kingdom for the under 11 leagues. And he played until he was 21 when he was noticed by a top team in Saudi Arabia. And he's currently in the top Saudi soccer league. And he plays for Al Nisar, which is currently fourth place in the league this year. Wow, that's really amazing. I'm really excited to see him hopefully qualify with the Saudi national team for the 2022 World Cup. Hopefully. And uh, so uh, Mukhtar does a lot of charity work back home, Mm -hmm. back home in Somalia. So he's doing a lot of different charitable things over there. And he's trying to give back as much as he can. And, you know, people have given him slack for playing for the Saudi national soccer team. Why? Uh, I guess people don't understand that at the time when he wanted to follow his soccer dreams, Mm. Somalia didn't have the infrastructure in place to have a team that was going to the big stages and playing on those stages. Mm -hmm. So him being born in Saudi Arabia allowed him to be able to play for them. So that is the reason he is on the Saudi Arabian national team. And hopefully he has success regardless of where he plays, Mm -hmm. because this is a special young talent. Definitely. You know what I mean? He will be hopefully across all TV screens soon enough. And you will all be getting Mukhtar Ali jerseys because you know what? He's one of us and we are all him. I'm cheering for El Nusar now. Hey, I'm an El Nusar fan. That's what's up. That's what's up. Let me, let me, let, I'm a, I, might, I might have to go online and get a jersey. Me too. I, I wouldn't mind that. I think we're going to have to get a jersey and put it up in the studio. You know, like, I feel like soccer jerseys are the swaggiest uh, jerseys in the world. Ooh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Yeah. And this El Nusar jersey is actually looking really good. So we might just get it. Yeah. Well. We're going to move on to the third part and last part of this show. Glad tidings to the believer where we give you and us a reminder of what's really important about life. And on today's episode, we will be talking about a hadith by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he said, the strong active believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer, while there is good in both. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, participated in swimming, archery, running, and horseback riding, which are all very active activities. And I feel like as people get older they forget about the importance of getting physically stronger as well as mentally stronger through life experience would you like to add something yeah so you know as a community the somali community specifically i'm speaking to you guys Um, As we get older, we like to indulge in the finer things in life and we forget about staying active. So activity doesn't mean playing sports every day because physically, as you get older, you can't do that as much as you used to when you were younger. But doing a daily jog, lifting some weights, linking up with the boys to play some sports, those things... We need to stay active and stay healthy because at the end of the day, 
We want to live long lives. We want to be able to do the most in life. And to be able to do that, we got to be physically healthy, right? Yeah. Because we will all get old one day. Mm-hmm. But doesn't mean we need to make ourselves older. Nope. Doesn't mean we need to put bad food into our bodies. First person I'm speaking to is myself. You know what I mean? I have a bad habit. I drink Pepsi every day. Anybody that knows me knows this. I am trying to cut that out. Get on water this year. Yes, I'm trying to discover water <laughs> and see what that does. You, you, know, you know what's funny? Like, uh, my friends always used to laugh when they would come to my house. My mom, uh, my mom was a nurse, so she would make sure that there was no sweets or no um, things that we could indulge in inside the house. So every time, you know, I'm sneaking that stuff in. Of course, like of course. You got the stash in the room. You got this big, big stash. Right? So growing up, all we ever had in our house was milk and uh, water. And when my friends come over for dinner, my mom would make uh, brown pasta or spinach pasta. And my friends to this day still make fun of me because of that experience coming to my house and seeing that kind of stuff, which is pretty funny. But now at my age, I appreciate the fact that my mom did that because I don't like to drink pop. I don't like to drink juices. I stick with water and milk. And I didn't realize that she had such an impact on me. When I was trying to fight it. <laughs> so, Hoya, thank you very much. I appreciate what you did for me. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. And, you know, as always, as we always tell you, this section is always a reminder to us first before it's going out to the public, right? Yeah. So, we're always trying to better ourselves. So, when we say these things... And we give you guys the du'as and the hadiths. We are every day. We are all sinners. So we are all trying to be better. Yep. So if we slip, like don't hold that against us. We're human. We're human. Right? We're not punching this into you. We're not forcing our, uh, our words on you. We're just speaking on things that we have come across and we have learned and we're always learning as we've spoke about in the section. So for all of you that have tuned in today, this is smooth with two O's holding it down today. Yep. And uh, before I let you go, you know, I got to give you guys one more quote and I'm going to give you a quote by Alan Iverson. The quote is, it's crazy to think you are the greatest football player in the world, which I did. And to be sitting here in the Hall of Fame of basketball, you tell me God ain't good. That's big. See that? After it all, you have got to always remain humble. Yeah. Remember your Lord. That's, that's it. That's it. Enjoy yourselves. Take care. All right. Till next time.